Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Gold Rush. I am just refueling that pump right there, and as soon as I've done that, I can start it. And I'm also going to start up everything in here, except for the splitter, and then we're going to start digging. Today is all about digging, so we want the trommel, the shaker, the conveyor belt, the conveyor belt container, and not the power splitter, and then the duplex jig. So let's, oh no, did I press start or stop on that one? No, I pressed start. Let's just double check that it's all running. Yep. Everything has got power running to it. And the shaker down there, is that one running? It says it's got power. I can't actually see it at the moment. Let's go bouncing off down here. And yes, that one is running as well. So the plan today is to spend all day digging. I would like to get six loads done today. I don't know if it's going to be possible. But we are going to try. I'm also going to try in-cab driving for all of it throughout, for the whole thing. Um, again, I don't really know if I'm going to be able to do this. And let's start that one up. Yeah, it's, it's driving this one in-cab that I'm not really sure about. Because of, you, you know what? Let's, um, let's, let's not be ridiculous. Let's, let's not be stupid. Uh, we'll end up driving ourselves into the ditch over there. We will do the excavator in-cab. I found out yesterday, uh, well, the... Um, last episode, I found out that it's actually quite easy to do the in-cab driving with the excavator so long as the conditions are right for it. They, you do have to have the correct conditions for it. So let me just back that one in around there and shunt it a little bit. Right now we can turn and I should be able to bring that one all the way up there and we can start loading. I would like to get six loads done today. I really don't know if I'm actually going to be able to do six loads. Uh, but I would like to. If we can get six done, that will be all of the... Let me just lower that one down a little bit. It seemed to be a really good angle right there. If we can get six uh, uh, six loads done today, it'll mean that we can... Um, there we go. Uh, tomorrow, we've got a really good like session for emptying everything out. All right, let me get the right buttons being pressed. There we go, that's better. And yeah, if we if we can have well, then we can like tomorrow we'll be able to have this really good session of clearing everything out. We'll have two lots of um, mats to wash out. There'll be well we'll have we'll have washed them out. We'll have put them in the buckets. We'll have three buckets of washings from the actual mats, and then we'll also have uh, eight buckets altogether of things from the of stuff from the bottom of the duplex jig. Which, again, there's quite a lot of material that goes into the through the duplex jig. It's not as much as it was, but it is going to end up being quite a lot. So it'll be interesting to see how much we end up with after we do all of that. So if we can get six done, that's the aim today. Um, when we, if, we, if we can't get six done, then we do as many as we can, and we'll finish off the six tomorrow. We can get at least four done. We know we can easily do four. I should be able to do five without too much trouble. Um, considering the amount of time we spent yesterday after we'd done several loads. We did three loads yesterday, didn't we? And then we went and um, cleaned out all the mats and everything. So maybe if we can't do a full six, maybe we can at least get five done. I should, I should think we ought to be able to do that. Um, I don't tend to do these episodes. As uh, First of all, those of you who don't particularly like episodes where I spend all the time digging for the episode, uh, you're probably not going to like this one. Um, I am literally going to just be digging and running back over to the plant for the whole of the episode. This, this is what we're doing this episode. This week is all about mostly digging. Last week I didn't do very much, and it seems to be that the audience that we have for this particular series is split roughly in half. Half of you seem to like me doing playing around, messing with other things, and... Um, just generally having a bit of fun and a mess around and the other half seem to like me actually just working on a particular task whether it's digging using the bulldozer doing something like that so i try to alternate week on week at the moment um it seems to be sort of working fairly well one week i will do a lot of playing around so last week i was playing around with the um getting the generator set up and the um the mo the the big fuel tank i've just filled i Literally, you just you just dip the thing in and it empties out a load of soil instantly. Um, yeah, we're getting the the fuel tank set up and then the 
Uh, the great big generator as well, we got that into place. And we were just kind of having a play around. So this week we're doing serious digging. And then next week we'll find something else that we're going to have a little play with. Uh, we will do a little bit of digging in between, but mostly next week we'll be playing around with different stuff. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet. I might actually take some stuff out to Pine Valley. Um, well, I might actually buy Pine Valley. There's, how's that for a start? Because we'll have a load of gold by that point. Um, I would like to get some more employees. I'd like to get a lot more employees. And the more employees that I can get, the better, because the more money that I will be able to make. And I quite like the idea of having enough employees to be generating a substantial amount of cash. Now, I just the way that the digger moved just now, I've actually jumped my tracks around a little bit but i'm i'm determined to spend this entire episode in cab for any of the excavator work that i'm doing just bring that one up a little bit there we go so that is the first load i will turn the excavator off in between each one because the excavator does cost quite a bit of money to it, it's time consuming mostly to refill it whereas this one i can just drive it up next to whichever thing that i want to use for use doing the refill either the big stationary tank or go up next to our mobile tank it doesn't really matter which it and it doesn't make much of it it's quite quick as well to go and refill it whereas the excavator i got to take the fuel to the excavator because driving it all the way across the claim is going to take too long now one of the things that people have been asking me to do i've had several people ask me to do this quite a number of times now is one of the buckets rather than putting it through the wave table you'd like me to use the pan and do it like that instead so i might actually do that in tomorrow's episode i feel that we could probably make time to do that as we're tomorrow is mostly going to be about washing stuff out and getting as much gold as we can so i could also do that i could see myself clear to um do one wash out like that and we can sort of see if it makes much difference doing it through the pan um Personally, I'm not a great big fan of doing it with the, the pan, which is why I've kind of resisted doing that. But I do get this request at least two or three times a week. So I'm thinking, that yes, we will do it. Even if it's just once, I will do it. Bucket is full already? That was quick. I don't know what the bucket is referring to. I'm pretty sure it's that bit at the top. But I thought it would have taken longer than that to actually get to the bucket is full warning. So let me bring that one back. And come around there. There we go. Bring it up through, and I'm back in place. Right, so there's one load done, and we're just about to start loading our second one. So I go flick into that one, and then flick into this one. That is literally as fast as you can flick through. You can't just, like, tab between the vehicles really, really quickly. It does actually take quite a bit of time to do it with this game, which is a little bit... I, I'm That's something that I feel could be better optimized in the future, and hopefully they will be able to better optimize that in the future. We will have to wait and see. Um, I'm, I do get used to Farming Simulator, and I know that some people do, you know, they don't particularly like constant comparisons with this and Farming Simulator. However, Farming Simulator is one of the top games in most of the, simu in the simulator genre. Uh, Farming Simulator is kind of one of the big top dogs. You know, everybody's heard of it. Everybody knows about it. You might not like it. Some of you may not like it. Um, although... To be honest, from some comments that I see on like different forums and that, I think the main reason that people choose to dislike Farming Simulator is less to do with the gameplay and mechanics of it, and more to do with the fact that it's the most popular one, and it's cool to be seen to dislike the one at the top. Um, and it's kind of like uh, with World of Warcraft as well. You have so many people saying that World of Warcraft is absolutely rubbish, and it's a terrible, terrible game. Um, except that it's at the top you know there is a reason that these games stay at the top and consistently stay at the top now i've heard the argument with world of warcraft now, i don't know if it would apply so much i guess it could um you could try to apply the ar argument to um farming simulator as well that the the reason what am i doing the reason that it stayed on top for so long is because people don't have any other games to go and play. So they play that game, and all their mates are st still playing that game, so everybody just goes and plays that game and pays the um, monthly fee. I disagree. Um, there's a lot of people that grew up playing World of Warcraft that don't play it anymore, and there is a whole load of new players coming into that game that have never played it before, that don't have any friends playing that game, that go into it and play it because they enjoy the experience. And 
yeah, I get I see the same with Farming Simulator. There's people that get fed up with it and then move on. Um, but getting you're, getting saturated with a game yourself does not mean that the game is rubbish. That's something that I do feel quite strongly about. Um, so many people, they play a game to death. They absolutely they play it and they play it and they play it until they're absolutely fed up with it. And then rather than accepting that, well, they're fed up with the game because they've played it to death. They've played it so much, they're now fed up with it. Um, they blame the game instead. And they say that it's the, you know, it's the game's fault that they're fed up with it. Um, because the game must be rubbish uh, because they used to like it and they don't like it anymore. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't get why people can't really, you know, some people, I'm not saying all people, but not by a long way. Um, but there are those out there. You see them on all the forums, and you see them even in the games as well. Oh, I hate this game now. This game is dead to me. And yet they're still there playing it. They're still there logging in. <laughs> you, I mean, obviously you don't see that on single-player games. You get saturated with the game. You, you play a game, you get fed up with it. And it happens with Farming Simulator. It happens with any other game. It happens with MMOs of all kinds. And people get fed up with playing World of Warcraft, and then they want to go off and they want to play a different game. And that's kind of the way of the world. That's, that's how things work out. That means that it's it's all working well. And there are hundreds of other games that you can go out and you can play. But I don't get why, when you decided it's time to move on to a new game, there's got to be a load of hatred and stuff sort of spat back to the game that you spent so long playing. And how did I get onto this? Oh, yeah, Farming Simulator. Um, so I sort of see this with Farming Simulator. Oh, you know, we got this new game coming out, Cattle and Crops. Farming Simulator is dead to me now. Cattle and Crops is the way forward. It's the only game, and yet, I mean, Cattle and Crops still doesn't come out, and it's being delayed and being delayed and being delayed. And then you've got Farmer's Dynasty, which uh, Dagwin is currently playing. Um, I'd like to be able to play it. I haven't been able to get in on that one yet. Um, it looks good. Don't get me wrong. It looks good, and it's got various different things in the gameplay that look really interesting. But Farming Simulator's got things in its gameplay that set it apart from the others as well. There's always going to be people that prefer one game over another. But so far, I have yet to see any Farming Simulator game that I feel is going to take the crown away from Giants. I haven't seen, well, I haven't seen any simulator game at all that I think is going to take the crown away from Giants. This one did temporarily, just for a little while, everybody thought this game was the bee's knees. And now it's kind of settled into, it's, it seems to be well thought of actually, this game. And I'm pleasantly ple I'm, I'm, ple I'm I was going to say surprised, but I'm not all that surprised because I sort of I've seen from the start the amount of work that has gone into producing this game, and you know we've got a we've only got a small dev team here, and yes there are some issues and so on, but they are working their way through every single issue that is a present in the game is slowly being worked through, and they are finding solutions and they're adding extra things into the game and improving on it all the time. So. I personally don't see, you know, this game is not going to sort of be one of those ones that ends up right down at the bottom of the pile. This game is near the top of the pile. It's not the top. It's, it isn't the top. Um, there's a lot of work that could be done to improve this game still. Um, but it's definitely up there. It is up there with the best of them. This, this game now, the makers of this game can hold their heads high knowing that they have made something that is up there with the best of the simulator gameplays. And I, I mean, I personally, I, I enjoy Farming Simulator. You may have noticed by the sheer quantity of videos of Farming Simulator <laughs> that are available on my channel. Um, I really enjoy playing that game. I do enjoy playing that game. And a lot of what that game is, is the modding community. And the modding community itself changes over the years. You've got people that used to make mods that don't make mods anymore. Um, some of them, you know, do so. Uh, some of them stop and... I don't know, you, you you get the same sort of, uh, I feel that I've sort of seen some of that same bitterness there. Well, I'm fed up with playing this game now, so why isn't everybody else? And why isn't everybody agreeing with me? And, you know, things along those lines. But then I'm seeing, and if I sort of just stopped and I looked at that, I would think that Farming Simulator was dying a slow death. But then I look at the more active parts of the community and new um, mods and stuff that are coming out in places, you know, from people that aren't so well known, people that are new to the game and trying out all these things for the first time. And I'm seeing some fantastic stuff coming through. I'm seeing some absolutely fantastic stuff coming through. So if ever you're sort of thinking with any game that, oh, it's, it's now dying and the devs are going to leave it and so on, 
don't look at the established community. The established community of any game does tend towards becoming a bit jaded over time. Um, it's just one of those things. Um, what you want to do is you want to look at the new players coming in. See new players coming in, seeing their reactions to the game. Don't look at the way that the um, already jaded experienced community is treating the new players because sometimes that will be good, sometimes that will be bad. But overall, I find that it doesn't massively contribute to a person's experience in a game. I mean, it does a bit. Don't get me wrong. It definitely does a bit. There is some impact. If you've got a load of people being really horrible to new players, they're less likely to stay. But I've seen so many games where... The established community is quite toxic and then the new people come along to play this game and they you know think it's absolutely wonderful i'm going to give this a go i don't really like the way that this established community is treating me so and they basically they just establish new variations of the same community into different places and to me that is something that is quite wonderful to see i've seen this a lot in farming simulator um established pages with modders who've been around for six years now making mods and so on and don't really like the way that things have gone or they've gotten fed up with playing it themselves and they're not happy with the various different things that they're not happy with it isn't like it used to be and um, very often you get it isn't like it used to be and well you wouldn't expect it to be it's it's moved on the, the game has advanced the world has changed um and you, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you kind of got to live with and so you see this going on and then you see people coming in and they're saying well i love the game but i don't like your attitude towards the game and so they're creating new communities new facebook pages are coming up with a lot of new active players that aren't sort of old school and old school for a lot of games farming simulator and like world of warcraft and things like that they're the ones that can be quite jaded and it's very easy to fall into that trap i know i have fallen into that trap myself especially with world of warcraft um not being how it used to be i remember how i felt when i first started playing world of warcraft and i don't get the same exhilarating rush that i used to but i'm not going to because i'm already familiar with the game i'm familiar with the mechanics i'm familiar with how it works i'm familiar with the fact that if i've got a warrior i can put plate mail on him and if i've got a mage i can't wear plate mail because you know, i'm a caster so it doesn't work like that and i know all of these things i know about that that's stuff that i didn't know when i started playing world of warcraft and on top of that when world of warcraft came out the internet wasn't as big as it is now you didn't have spoilers for everything that ever happened in any game right you get a new game come out now and before it's released you know every single little detail about that game everything there is to know about it except well giants they do a very good job of limiting what they tell you before the game is released and they do an excellent job of that as one thing i really do like about um farming simulator is the way that they release it they don't give all the details but this is something that happens so much um, I don't get this, you know, people complaining they don't get the same rush and exhilaration that they had when they started playing World of Warcraft. But if you were to release a game like World of Warcraft without giving all the details of the game beforehand and um, like giving hundreds and hundreds of spoilers beforehand, it would or it would be getting marked down really badly. It would like it would take a major like the publicity then would like do the game some actual serious damage um, because people have changed the way that they expect and they want things now they expect to be told everything up front they don't want these surprises and then they get you know um they seem confused that they don't have all these surprises in this mystical wonder that they had before um it just seems to me very strange and i'm not quite you know i like i said i've been guilty of this myself with world of warcraft in particular because i had this mystical wonderland that i knew nothing about and then i be, i sort of knew more about it and they made changes in order to make the game friendlier for newer players and i didn't like these changes because i had spent hundreds of hours playing this game back when i had hundreds of hours available and i felt that well you know nobody else should get these things easier because i had to spend so much time and it was so difficult for me to get um and just like doing basic simple things in the game some things were like used to be really really difficult to do and then they made it easier because people didn't like it being really difficult it was a very niche market for people who liked it being difficult and as time has gone on 
people have changed. You know, the, the game does tend to get a young audience. So you've got sort of 12 to 18 year olds. There's a lot of 12 to 18s. Um, there's also a lot of adults in the game as well. But the younger audience, they expect things a little bit differently now. Um, they've grown up with everything on tap. Everything is on demand. Uh, you don't have to sort of surf four channels anymore. Uh, you've got everything on demand. You can watch any show that you want at any time any day of the week unless it's a brand new one and you're waiting for a new episode to come out so it's you know things have changed and so the way that games are made and done and marketed has changed as well and it does feel that the communities and around a lot of these games become jaded because it's not like it used to be and it's not necessarily the game it's the world in general has kind of changed a little bit to go with it and so then you kind of sort of feel this coming through and you know, the simulator community, I did. it did seem to get a little bit toxic in places surrounding Gold Rush because the game wasn't perfect when it came out. And to me, I found that quite disappointing because it's not a AAA title. Definitely not. It's a small studio with just a few developers working their butts off trying to get this done. And they have put in some ridiculously long hours in order to get this game out and done. And it's been improving all the time. And this, there was so much hatred for the game when it first came out and for how the developers had gone about doing it. I was really disappointed with that. I, I Honestly, I was disappointed with the simulator community in general over the initial reception that this game had. Um, and you'd ex every game has bugs when it comes out. The hugest, the biggest titles that come out. There are hundreds of thousands of computer combinations and hardware combinations and stuff like that. So even the biggest titles will have bugs on the day of release. And then this title comes along. This title is a tiny, tiny little studio that has got eight people that can test it. And they tried um, getting it to do some closed beta testing so that they could speed the whole testing process up and make it more successful. And what did the community turn around and do? By way of thank you for doing that, um, yeah, a few rather crusty individuals went and publicly released the um, released footage of it. And so the developers said, well, we can't have that because it's kind of it's, you know, making the name of the game even worse. It's it's spoiling our reputation by you releasing this stuff before we're ready for it to be released. And so they had to stop doing the closed beta. You know, people signing a not an NDA, or people signing a non-disclosure agreement, and then releasing the stuff anyway, disclosing information. And uh, you know, I thought that was absolutely disgusting and appalling. I was generally, genuinely disgusted with that, and um, that is the reason that it then started to take longer for us to get patches because people basically just. Um, gave two fingers to the devs and said, you know what, I don't care if I've signed a non-disclosure agreement. I don't care what kind of work you've put into this. I'm doing this under my terms and then went and released footage. And I was, I thought that was terrible. Um, but since then, things have changed. It's gone, you know, things, things have drastically improved. We've got this beautiful, beautiful game. It's getting far... It, the balance of the game is becoming far, far better. It's really, really improving. I'm going to leave everything running. Actually, how many loads? Is that four loads? I got a horrible, horrible feeling that those buckets down there. Oh, dear. <laughs> this, this is not good. Um, these buckets are completely... F I've done four loads and I've accidentally filled up. That was a mistake. Um, I got that one there. Let me just uh, swap that one out very quickly. There we go. Put that one in there and grab one of you. And put you down there and grab you. So that's, I think I've done, how many, I don't actually know how many loads I've done. I think I've done four loads. I want to do two more. Um, but <laughs> I accidentally filled the buckets up too much. So I spent so long talking about these games. I, I got completely caught up and I think that was three loads. But yeah, we, we've got very, I've, I've lost. Do you know, it was four loads. I'm sure that was actually four loads that we've now done. We're on 40-odd percent on the mats, um, and I'm 5% on that bucket. Yeah, I, I did four loads, didn't I? Because three loads will fill them up completely. So that was the fourth load that went in, and then I wasted it. What a shame. Well, let's go. We'll sleep until dawn. I'm curious to see if it's going to use up more fuel. 
I don't think it did. Right, gold gathered by workers, 33 ounces. Worker salary, 3,400. Process soil, 113. Now, I had a discussion with someone a few days ago. I can't remember exactly when. Um, regarding whether we thought this was cubic meters or cubic yards. Um, now, in theory, it'd be cubic yards because it's estates. And you guys still work in imperial. Whereas the rest of the world now works in metric. We do still make reference to imperial, but generally we work in metric. So if it was anywhere else in the world, I would say that it would actually be, yes, um, yeah, it would be cubic meters. But because it's set in the States, even though it's um, the guys that made this are Polish, um, because they set it in the States, I'm going to make the assumption that they've actually put it in cubic yards rather than cubic meters because of the States still working in Imperial. I'm not actually sure why you guys work in Imperial, actually. You know, it's... Um, it does strike me as odd that you've got this one country that still works in Imperial. The whole of the rest of the planet now works in Metric. And you guys in the States are still in Imperial. Anybody know why? I'm, I am curious. I think it's just because, you know, people are set in their ways. And you get that in this country as well. Although we had our government turn around and say, you know what, we're doing Metric so that we can fit in with the rest of Europe. Europe quickly switched over to Metric fairly early on. And then we followed suit so that um, it would make it easier for us. Um, but if you like go to any farm, just about any farm in the country, uh, generally people still talk in uh, Imperial. So you, you do tend to, at the moment for us, Imperial and Metric tends to be fairly interchangeable. Um, if I'm doing a job, I will have, uh, you know, I'm given a set of measurements to cut a piece of wood, say. Uh, it'll be, could you please cut that piece of wood 300 mil long, 3 inches wide? Right, we literally we will use both quite interchangeably all the time. So 300 mil long, three inches wide, and oh, make sure it's no more than about 20 mil thick. Um, so yeah, it, it, I've se I've had that frequently where we're literally we're sort of going between the two, and um, you'll have both of them mixed up together. If it's written down officially on plans and that, it's almost always well, I was going to say almost it's it's it is any plans and that they're always written out in metric. Um, but when you're talking and when you're taking measurements yourself and it's not for, like, being written down officially, um, it tends to sort of be a mix between the two. Let me just unload that one. So, yeah, the state of the community now for simulators, um, or for this simulator in particular, does seem to be particularly good. Um, you look around on the Facebook pages and that, and generally speaking, you've still got a few people that don't like that there's certain things not in the game. You know, we haven't got multiplayer, and yeah, 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 we know that we don't have multiplayer. You're not going to have multiplayer in this game, right? It will not happen. Multiplayer re involves rebuilding this game from the ground up. It's a completely new game to have multiplayer. So maybe Gold Rush version 2 will have multiplayer, but this one will not. There will not be multiplayer in this game. They've already said that over and over. As for modding, we don't know. We think that the plan is for their, they're going to release a load of stuff, and then later on they're planning to open the game to modding. Um, their decision on that one, we'll, so we'll sort of wait and see. It could make the difference between this game kind of becoming stale after a little while, or this game really staying as one of the better ones for a long time to come. One of the main reasons that Farming Simulator is so highly thought of still is not just because of the base game. The base game is solid. The base game is well-rounded, it's well-made, and it's quite solid. Um, but no, the main reason that Farming Simulator is doing so well is because it is a um, it's a game that's open to modding. It's completely 100% open to modding, and the modders make all kinds of stuff that you just don't get in the base game. Some of the mods that are available in Farming Simulator completely and 100% alter the face of the game. And modding is what has kept that game at the top of the pile. Absolutely 100% at the top of the pile. Um, it's, like kind of, it's like playing Skyrim. I mentioned playing Skyrim a little while ago. I'm now playing Skyrim again with mods. I have played Skyrim a lot. Okay, I love that game. I've absolutely played it to death. I've played that game until I'm absolutely fed up to the back teeth with it and I can't stand the thought of playing it for even another minute. And then a couple months later, I see it there on my desktop and I think, you know what? I fancy another go. 
and then I go in and I take a look and it's kind of much the same because I've got this seriously overpowered character and it's a bit dull so then I'll roll a new character and it becomes a challenge again it becomes interesting and that's just with the vanilla game then I think you know what I'm gonna try a few of these new mods and I start adding in some mods and oh my good gravy mods change the game so much it is just it's like you're starting a whole new game I have at the moment I'm doing a playthrough that is not altering the mo it's not altering the base game very much is altering it a bit but not by a huge amount and so it's, it's just kind of simple little changes where i've um quickly boosted up my alchemy skill up to level 100 because that's kind of the first thing that i do when i play the game anyway i just concentrate 100 percent on alchemy and i couldn't be bothered to go and level alchemy all the way up through again just because um, it's it is quite slow and tedious when you're doing it from scratch So I've leveled alchemy all the way up to completely full and I've got every single skill point that I can put into the alchemy tree So I can make really good potions and that's great fun. I've also added in a load of extra stuff um, What have I got? I got one that adds like a hundred it literally is that added in like 1500 extra critters so you've got loads of different fish you've got loads of different bugs all over the place um, there's hundreds of butterflies around. It's literally everywhere you go. is just clouds of different types of butterflies. Um, so you've got loads of extra alchemy ingredients because you can go and harvest all of these things. It's brilliant. Um, and plus they've added, he's added in a load of variants on some of the familiar names of um, the different crops. Uh, not the crops, the, like the plants. So like the thistles have got six different colors and nightshade has got six different colors and so does the you know the i think it's the mountain flowers they come in three colors well actually now they come in um like eight different colors um so you've know, got all of these extra ingredients that have been added in which just makes it a little bit more interesting there's more stuff that you can pick up um i've added in some extra bag mods as well so that instead of being limited like 300 inventory space i've now got about 800 inventory space and it generally just makes the game more fun. Um, oh, and there's another mod as well. One that's actually really cool. It's, uh, it's about smelting. And, you know, you can kind of you can go and get the ores and you can smelt them down. Well, this mod, most things you can pick up in the game can now be smelted or broken down. So you go and get, like, six wooden plates. You can turn them into a block of firewood, which you can then make some arrows from. If you get, you pick up, like, the silverware from inside the castles, um, aside from the usual getting someone... Um, if you pick up silverware from in the castles in Skyrim, you will probably have one of the housekeepers um, hire a load of thugs to go after you and attempt to kill you because you've stolen silverware. And even if you're allowed to take it, they still get upset and they still send someone after you. I don't really get that, but um, yeah, you can't go after them and you can't beat them to, you know, just sort of say, look, I think that was very rude. Here, how would you like it? Uh, you can't do that and they never acknowledge it, but they do do it. So you kind of... but. One of the things you can do with all of that silverware, you can take it over to the smelter and you can smelt it down into silver bars, which you can then use to level up your blacksmithing skill. Um, oh, and I've also added in one that levels up my blacksmithing skill faster. And that one's also really good. And I've kind of left the combat stuff alone at the moment. And I will probably go and change that as well. Um, I've got the, you know, you've got the various add-ons and that. Um... But there's also, some people have spent a huge amount of time and effort building whole quest lines and stuff for that game. It's just fantastic. And this is what I'm talking about with mods. If this game here is opened up to modding, um, the possibilities are absolutely endless. I could see new maps coming in. I could see whole new materials. I could see, you know, we've got at the moment, we just dig up some dirt and we get gold. I could see people adding in sand and gravel quarries, um, copper extraction so that you've got these big leaching pits for copper and um, iron ore and crushing and, you know, various different crushes and stuff and all kinds of different stuff. Even I could see... Um, Changing the base game completely so that you can go anywhere on a map and you go to a claim and you've got to cut down a load of trees and stuff first. I could see all of that being added in with mods. I could see the modding community taking this game with both hands and really going to town with it because it, there is so much potential for it. And really that is down now to the creators. We'll have to wait and see what they decide. They have talked about it. 
They have said that they've considered it, but whether they'll actually want it or not, I don't know. Some creators don't like the idea of mods going into their games because they feel it spoils the initial ideas that they had for the game and they don't want to change it round. And I don't really know why you wouldn't want to because, quite frankly, it can make the difference between a game that continues to draw in new players for the next five years or a game that dies a death very quickly. You can see that from Skyrim. Skyrim is continuing to draw in new players, even now. And all they've done is re-release it on a different console. That's it. They haven't done anything special with the game. They've just re-released it on another console. And everybody's calling, oh yes, here, please, take my money. Take my money, please. I want you to have my money. And thrown money at them. Um, I did the same. When they... Skyrim Special Edition. Yep, I, I looked at Skyrim Special Edition. I looked at the difference between that and the base game. And I said, shut up and take my money. Just take my money. Here it is. I, I don't care. I'm not even going to look at the price tag. Just take my money. And started playing Skyrim Special Edition. And yeah, it, it, it's brilliant. And there's also a survival mode in there. Um, which, yeah, we'll, we'll worry about that another day. But I feel that a survival mode in this game could actually be really, really interesting. I don't know whether someone could actually mod that in. So that you've got to... Um, you've actually got to worry about food and drink. So every now and then you've got to go into town and you've got to buy supplies. You've got to buy food. You've got to buy water. And um, you've got to have a supply of heat in your uh, caravan over there. And... you. You know, little things like that, I feel, could be quite interesting in this game. I think that could actually be a really, really cool thing to add in. Um, I know not everybody's going to want Gold Rush um, Survival Simulator. But yeah, like, our propane tank that we got on the front, that's our heat. Now, it gets pretty cold here in Alaska, I've been told, especially at night time. So if we got this little caravan over here, and that propane there is the only source of heat that we've got, we're going to want something else to, you know, warm the caravan. So you've got to take the propane tank into town, and you've got to get it refilled with gas, and you've got to bring it back out and put it back on so that you've got heat for the night. And if you don't have it, then you freeze to death. Um, you've got to have food, so you've got to go into town, you've got to buy food. Or maybe you could even go hunting. You could add in hunting into this game. You could go up through. We've heard wolves and stuff howling, and we've seen deer in the hills. We could take, um, you know, maybe a, not a bow and arrow, maybe just use a gun, because I believe you use a lot of guns in Alaska, don't you? Um, we don't have much in the way of guns in this country. You get a few farmers with shotguns, and that's about it. Most people don't have guns. Um, but I understand that guns are a lot more common over in the States. So if you're in Alaska, you're going to have a gun. And so you could take your gun, you could go off into the hills, you could shoot yourself a deer, you could bring that one back, and then you got some food for a couple of days. You got water out of the creek, but you'd actually have to go and get it. That could be so much fun. Seriously, that'd be brilliant. You get so caught up doing digging, and then you forget to eat or drink, and you start to feel really thirsty, and you can't concentrate and stuff like that. That'd be so, that would be brilliant. That really would. Right, we got 64% on each of the maps at the moment, and then the... Jig is on 68%. I reckon it's going to add another 10%. We're looking at like 75% on those maps. Tomorrow, I'm going to do another load. I'm going to do one more load at the beginning of tomorrow's episode. So we fill those buckets up completely. And then I will take them out. We'll take the mats out. And we will start having a bit of a clean up here. And see what we can get. Our lead here has come off. I'm just going to drop that one down there for a minute. We're not going to worry about that for a minute. Um, yeah, we'll have a proper clean-up in tomorrow's episode and see how much gold we end up with from all of this that we got so far. We've got six buckets here. We'll have eight buckets all together, plus we get whatever we get from the gold mats. And if you enjoyed this episode, please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.